this episode of Radioisotope, we are learning about cesium-137. We have Professor Jiho from Harvard University to talk about the radioisotope. So, Professor, what is the formula for cesium-137? Well, the formula for cesium-137 is n equals initial n times 1 half to the power of t over 30.17. Interesting. One of the viewers asked me this question. Does it undergo fission or fusion? What a great question. Cesium-137 goes through fission because nuclear decay occurs spontaneously. What type of daughter and parent nuclei does it have? Um, the daughter nuclei is barium-137 and the parent nuclei is xenon-137. What is the half-life of cesium-137? The half-life of cesium-137 is 30.17. Where does cesium-137 come from? Well, cesium-137 is produced when a uranium and plutonium absorb neutrons and it undergoes fission. How is cesium-137 obtained? Well, it is obtained from uranium-235 decay and it is presumably isolated chemically and physically. This process is known as centrifugation. How effective is this isotope in solving the problem that it is intended to solve and who uses it? Well, cesium-137 has a lot of uses. Presumably, it is quite effective at all of them. It is used for calibration of radiation detection equipment, oil field wireline density measurements, dating isotopes for recent sedimentation and cancer treatment. What are the possible unintended side effects? Well, cesium-137 would release into the environment. As a gamma emitter, it poses a lot of high external health risks, but some positive effects would be that it is water-soluble and it can work its way to the water table. It seems like cesium-137 is very dangerous. How does this affect the environment? Well, hospitals and research laboratories generate waste containing cesium-137 and they usually do not enter the environment. But, occasionally, industrial instruments containing cesium-137 are lost or stolen. Anyone who handles them improperly will get exposed. These devices are typically metal and they may be considered scrap metal and sold for recycling. If they find their way into a steel mill and are melted, they can cause significant environmental contamination. They may also be discarded and sent to a municipal landfill, or sold for other reasons. These devices should be considered dangerous. How do people come in contact with cesium-137 and how does it affect them? Well, like all radionuclides, exposure to radiation from cesium-137 results in increased risk of cancer. Everyone is exposed to a very small amount of cesium-137 in soil and water as a result of atmospheric fallout, exposure to waste materials from contaminated sites or from nuclear accidents can result in cancer risks and much higher than typical environmental exposures. If exposures are very high, serious burns and even death can result. Instances of such exposures are very rare. Professor Gio, what is your stance on cesium-137? Well. I believe that cesium-137 is a wonderful radioisotope. It provides many jobs and it helps cure cancer. Despite some negative side effects, the overall outcome for its use benefits society over hurting society. That's the end to our interview. It was an honor to interview such an intelligent professor. Thank you. My pleasure.